Good morning, good morning, you've slept the whole night through. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning and welcome to church. We're so happy to see you. I'm sure you've been dancing and giving God all the praise following along with the videos that just finished playing. How are you today? We've all missed you. Auntie Yemi, Auntie Shade, Auntie Jumi, Auntie Wendy, Auntie Ivy. We wish we could see you. But we are sure that you're doing very well. Have you returned to school? Online school, yes, but still, it's an opportunity for you to grow and to learn and um, to put in your very best. We look forward to seeing you, but in the meantime, we send you our hugs and our kisses. Now, welcome to today's lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Are you aware of this? Have you heard it before? Before we start, those of you who are old enough and can take down your notes by yourself, I ask that you grab your Bibles, you grab your church journals and your pens or your pencils and get ready. But before we jump into the lesson, let's go through. What are we going to go through? Our identity. Yes, do you remember it off head still? Oh, well, I'm sure some of you can stand up and boldly say it, but those who can't, please read along with me. Now, number one, I am fearfully made. Number two, I am wonderfully made. Number three, I know my identity. Number four, I am a child of God. Number five, number five is, who said it before the truck came in? I am creative and full of ideas. Number six, I am not a slave to fear. Number seven, I am bold. And number eight, is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, yes, yes. We declare it, we say it, we believe it, and it is the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Now, today, like I said, we're talking about the parable of the wheat and the weeds. Who remembers what, what parable means? A parable is an illustration to teach you something, to teach a moral lesson. And Jesus Christ used parables to explain to his listeners what he was talking about, particularly when talking about the kingdom of God. So we are going to talk today about one of the parables of Jesus Christ. So grab your Bibles. We're going to open and read from our Bibles today. But before then, I want you to think about weeds. To think about seeds who knows about farming today's parable is about farming what do you know about farming about plants about seeds about weeds look outside look around you you see plants you see grass you see some beautiful flowers i'm sure in your gardens now farmers always put in the good seeds but weeds always came up also so we will be talking about seeds and weeds so um do you know the difference between the weeds and the seeds do you know the difference between the plants either plants for beauty like flowers roses and daisies or plants for eating in a farm like vegetables that um, you you get to eat at home now, can you look at these pictures? Can you tell which of these are plants and which are seeds? Some, some of them look really, really nice. You will think, oh, maybe this is just a beautiful flower. But let me tell you, number one, number two, number four, and number five are weeds. They are not proper plants. They grow, weeds usually grow by themselves. And what is the purpose of a weed? Sometimes just to deprive the plants of food. 
some of you in um, year two, year three, you're already learning about plants, you're learning about seeds and planting. So you know that there's sometimes you plant and then the weeds come and they deprive your plants of air, of sunlight, of soil. So that is the work of seeds, is to deprive the proper plants of its nutrition. So like I said, today's parable can be found in Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Do you have your Bibles? Do you need time to open your Bibles? If you don't have your Bibles or can't open it fast enough, quickly write it down and you can read this later on. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Now, Auntie Twain will do a quick read before we go into dis discussing today's lesson. Auntie Twain is old, so she needs her glasses now. She's going to have to wear them so that she can read her Bible. So, Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Jesus presented another parable to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed fine seed in his field. While men were sleeping, his enemy came and oversold weeds in among the wheat and left the runoff. When the stalk sprouted and produced fruit, then the weeds also appeared. So the slaves of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow fine seeds in your field? How then does it have weeds? He said to them, An enemy, a man, did this. The slaves said to him, Do you want us then to go out and collect them? meaning the weeds and the seeds. He said, No, for fear that while collecting the weeds, you uproot the wheat with them. Now, the wheat was what the farmer had sown, remember, and he wanted to grow wheat. He said, No, for fear that while collecting the weeds, that is the bad seeds, you collect the wheat, the good seed, with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the harvest season, I will tell the reapers, as the harvesters, the people who go to pick up the good um, crop, first collect the weeds and bind them in bundles to burn them up. We don't need those. Then gather the wheat, the good things, into my storehouse. Well, we can now go through the lesson just to understand what it is that we have read. Remember, like I said, the farmer went. It was Jesus who was telling this story to describe what the kingdom of God is like. And he said that the kingdom of God is like a farmer who goes out to plant crops. That's good seed. He planted wheat seed in his rich soil. Do you know what wheat is? Wheat is used to make what? Hmm, yum, yum. Cookies and cakes and flour and, sorry, and bread and biscuits and noodles. We all love, love those, don't we? But as the story tells us, what happened next? At night, an enemy came and planted weeds in the field. The enemy knew what he was doing. But no one knew that the enemy had done this. Remember, these weeds are bad for plants. So the farmer wanted a rich harvest, but the enemy had come to destroy his harvest. Oh no, that can't be very good. So what happened next? When the seeds started to grow, the workers noticed that the weeds also had started to grow among the wheat. This would reduce the harvest. This would cause the harvest to not be as bountiful as the, as the farmer desired. And they wondered, how did this happen? We only planted good wheat seeds. They were very careful and the, the farmer was good at, at his work. Over time, the good wheat grew and it grew. But guess what? The weeds grew too because they used the same nutrients from the soil. 
they get the same nutrients from the sun as the farmer waters his wheat so also do the weeds get some of the water that he spreads about and you get get something else the wheat and the wheat look the same if you were not if it was not a trained eye as in a trained farmer you could ha couldn't have told the difference remember we looked at some of the weeds in the earlier slide and we thought oh well this looks like a plant but when it was harvest time remember in jesus's parable that we read he said leave them to grow together and when it is harvest time they will clear the weeds and burn them and they would clear the wheat and keep it in the barn house. That is because the harvesters could see the difference. So that was exactly what happened. When it was harvest, they threw away the weeds and they saved the wheat. Do you know the explanation of this parable? Jesus gave us an explanation. He said, the field is the world in which we all live in. So the next question would be, who are the wheat and who are the weeds? Because the wheat and the weeds re refer to human beings, to you and I. So who are the wheat and who are the weeds? Jesus explained that the good seeds represent the people who believe in Jesus and follow him. The weeds are the people who do not believe in Jesus. And who is the enemy? Mm, the enemy is the devil. So the enemy comes in to plant the weeds because he wants to affect the harvest for Jesus. When Jesus comes to take all his children home. Mm. Some people may say that they believe in Jesus, but they do not have Jesus in their hearts. These people are like the weeds because they haven't allowed the wheat, the word of God, to grow in their hearts. They have weeds that need to be taken out and burnt. Now, the people who are really children of God, they will begin to look different than the rest of the world people will be able to see that, like the wheat, you will look different from the weeds. People will see the difference. They will see in your actions. They will see in your behavior. They will see in your speech that you have love. You are, you are kind. You, you, are, you, you have gentleness in your soul. You treat people with patience. People who are really children of God begin to look so different than the rest of the world. Like the wheat look different from the weeds, others will see the difference clearly. They will see that your actions and your behavior show love, show kindness, show gentleness, quick to forgive others, very patient. You have self-control. That shows that the word of God the seed that has been planted in your heart has taken root and has started to produce fruit, the fruits of the Spirit. It will show in who you become and in who you are. Now, uh, we have to go over what we've learned today. I really wish we could be in the same room so that you can tell me what you've learned and we can go over this story together but I'm sure that your mom or your dad are there with you so you can discuss it with them or with your older siblings. Discuss it with them about what it is that we have learned and what are those things we have learned. Point one, sometimes it can be difficult for us to know just by looking which things are good and which are bad. Remember we said the wheat, it was difficult for some people to tell the difference between the wheat or the wheat but the farmer could tell. And that is because the farmer had the right understanding and knowledge about things. God is like that farmer. This is our point too. He alone is the ultimate judge of everyone's heart. 
he looks not only at our outward appearance, God sees into the hearts of man. So it is not our job because we can't see into people's hearts. It is not our job to decide who is good or bad. Yes, we can tell what is good or bad, but we cannot judge who is good or bad. Third point we have today is that children of God, and that is you and I, we must really be different from other people, other people being those who do not believe in God. We must show that we are children of God by the way we talk, by the way we think, and by the way we behave. That way you are an ambassador of Christ. Point four is that God loves everyone, whether they're good or they're bad. God wants everyone to be like him, to come to him, to be holy and to be righteous. It is God's desire that none be lost. So he wants everyone, whether they're good or bad. He knows even those who are bad now can be good. All they have to do is to give themselves to him. So for you and I, the main lesson we should take from this class is that rather than judging or shutting people out and saying, oh, you are different from me. You are not a Christian. You are not a believer. Instead of shutting them out, we should pray for them. We should draw them close. We should tell them about Jesus Christ so that they also can be partakers of this good news. They can be partakers of the blessings of God, of the presence of God in their lives because you and I know the difference. So, should we pray for them now? I think we should. Now, close your eyes and bow your heads and follow me as we pray. Dear God, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent for all people. We ask, Lord God, that you will help us to love you and to love others, sorry, as you do. To not judge one another. And help us also, Lord, to bring others to a knowledge of you. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you say amen? Can you think of someone that you can pray for especially? Maybe someone in your neighborhood, a friend, someone in school? Pray for others every day, even as you pray for yourself. If you still have your pen, I want you to write this down. Your memory verse for this week is Matthew 7, 16. That is Matthew chapter 7, verse 16. And it says, you can identify them by their fruit. That is, by the way they act. Hmm. Who is them? Who are they referring to by saying you can identify them? Now it is children of God. You can identify us, children of God, by our fruit, meaning by the way we act. And I'm very sure that you all, being children of God, will be on your best behavior. I wish you all the very best. We keep praying for you, that you will stay safe, that you will do well in school, and that your parents also, that they will, God will take care of every single one of them in Jesus' name. Thank you very much for coming to church today. We pray that you have a good week ahead and we look forward to seeing you next week, Sunday, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye. The Parable of the Weeds, a story that Jesus told. This is Jim. Jim is a farmer. One day he is putting out seeds to grow a crop. He will bake bread from it after it is ready to harvest. During the night, someone sneaks up to his field and plants weeds beyond his crop. After a while, Jim notices that there are weeds growing in his crop. Jim, however, does not tear out the weeds right away. He lets the weeds grow alongside his crop. And when the plants are still young, they look very similar to the rest of the weeds, and Jim does not want to accidentally destroy his crop. 
Once everything has grown, Jim first picks out the weeds and burns them. After that, he harvests his crops and bakes the bread just as he had planned. Jesus told this story to show his listeners that God does not immediately punish bad people. After death, some people will be sent to a beautiful place called heaven, where they will spend eternity with God. The others will be sent to a horrible place called hell, where they will be forever separated from God.